God bless you. Grace and peace. Welcome back to Soteria Prophetic Ministries. I'm your host, Delisa Fields, and I'm going to finish up our discussion on um, season sensitivity. Now, we've um, talked about seasons extensively, and listen, just because I'm finishing up the series, by no means uh, am I stating that that conversation is over. It just means that I'm ready to move on to something else. <clears throat> but... Um, I am going to move on to something else um, next week, but I wanted to finish this thought um, for those of you who, um, you know, are in some perplexing seasons, some frustrating seasons um, and just want to make sense. You've been asking God, Lord, you said this, you, you know, I received the word, you sent the word and I believe you, I believe the vessel that you sent to deliver the message. But God, I don't see what you promised. I don't see what you said. Um, in fact, Things look worse. I was better off before I got the word. Um, and I just want to assure you that that is a part of the process. So for today's podcast, I want to focus on um, Mary, the mother of Jesus. I want to focus on what her process looked like. And let's see if maybe you can see some of yourself in that, some of your frustration, some of the shiftings and movements that took place during her process um, that may mirror something similar to what you're going through. Um, so case in point. When the angel Gabriel approached Mary, um, this was something that she did not invite. She wasn't praying for it. She wasn't asking for it. Um, and, you know, I'll say many times in my own ministry walk as a pastor, there have been some very challenging times in leadership. Times when, you know, I'm, I feel like Moses, like, you know, Lord, these people, you know, I love them. But, you know, sometimes and not all of them, but just sometimes uh, pastoring can be so challenging. Um, it is, you know, very demanding and and you don't always see, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's just it's just challenging. Praise God. Um, so, you know, there are things that we don't ask God for. But because he's God and because he knows what he's put inside of us, he put, he makes a demand on it and he pulls it out. Right. And so this is what's happening with Mary. There's a conversation um, considering Mary and, and the Lord found Mary to be a woman of favor, high favor, um, you know, a woman worthy of being the first female carrier of the word of God. I mean, a very delicate mission. OK. And so you would think that with something like this. You know, this woman is tasked with birthing Jesus. I mean, surely, surely she's surrounded by angels. Demons can't touch her. People are going to favor her. Doors are going to open for her. You know, her relationships are going to be the best. And guess what, friends? And you, you and I know that was not the case. In fact, Everything that should have happened for Mary was exactly what did not happen. She did not have the family support. She did not have community support. She did not have relationship support at one point. God literally <laughs> had to intervene and tell Joseph by virtue of a dream to go back and get Mary. So even though she was in a season, I, I mean, uh, she was in a season of favor. That's what the word of God says. You are blessed and you are highly favored that she Mary was the angel Gabriel pronounced a season of blessings and high favor, not favor, high favor. And listen, I don't even understand what all that means. OK, but you would think with with such a an announcement um, of a season like that, that everything is just going to I mean, you know, you're just going to have a walk in the park. All you have to do is wake up and just be great. You know, everything is going to happen for you and everything is going to be well. And I maintain to tell you that that was not the case. So in this particular incident, we find that Mary, um, everything that she expected to happen uh, for her didn't. OK, and her family turned against her. The community wanted to stone her. They consider her an adulterer. Joseph broke up with her and. um It was just, it was just rough. Um, but I will say this, that um, she persevered and God was with her. God was with her. And I also tell you this, that don't think for a minute that just because um, things are going rough for you right now, 
that God has forgotten about you or that God has taken his hand off of you. Can I tell you something? And, I, and I, I'm going to tell you not so much what I've read. I know what I read. I know what I've studied for 30 plus years, but I know what I've lived. And let me tell you something. You're talking to someone or you're listening to someone who has gone through some seasons. And I'm just going to put it like that. Some seasons, period. And there have been times when God has pronounced things concerning my life and all hell broke loose. I mean, all hell broke loose. All the hounds came from out the, the dog pounds. I mean, the buzzards, the, the, <laughs> all the dirty birds, you know, all the foxes, the wolves, all of them. It seemed like, it seemed like some kind of demonic zoo opened the cage and say, go to Delisa. <laughs> You know, it's like they GPS them and routed them to my life. I'm telling you. And it will seem if you don't know your God. All right. Those who know their God, you've got to know your God. Uh, if you don't know your God, you will throw in the towel. You will walk away. You will you will listen. You will uh, uh, denounce your call, your your everything and say, you know what? This this can't be God ain't a bit of God in this. And, and you know, it was better for me before I even said yes. And I'm telling you that the seasons like that will make you feel like, like, you know, God, it, it, like not only is God not with you, but you'll feel like God is your enemy. Like he hates you and wants you to die. You know, like God wants you dead. And there are seasons like that. I just feel the presence of God. And, and, and if you don't know your God and, and you know, my, my people, my church, my spiritual sons and daughters will tell you our theme for the year is um, year of the student. Learn who God is. Learn who God put your ear to his mouth, bury yourself in his word, crawl into his lap, listen and yield to the Holy Spirit and learn who your God is. Because there is a time and there's coming a time where many are going to be swept away and now are because of what somebody said. And you've got to learn God for yourself. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging you and I'm advising you to get into a place because if you don't have nothing, but I know what God told me, you better hold on to that. If that's all that you have, hold on to that and know that God will never fail you. He will never leave you. I'm going to leave this thought with you. Mary walked through her stuff. She walked through being abandoned by Joseph. She walked through being uh, 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 ostracized by her community. She walked through even at the time of giving birth. People walked away from her. Nobody let her in. And you know what? She kept going. She kept pressing. She kept endeavoring. And that's what you have to do. You know, listen, just because God said I've opened doors for you doesn't mean everybody, not everybody heard that call. All right. And there's some people who should have opened doors for you and didn't for whatever reason. And guess what? God made another way. God said, fine. You know, you you shut down the opportunity for, for my chosen daughter to give birth in your house, to give birth in your place of establishment. You shut that door to her because of the season that you couldn't understand that she was going through. So guess what? You know, you 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 whereas you could have operated in a in a season and a blessing of Obed Edom where I would have blessed everything in your house. So now you've disqualified yourself. Hey, baby. You disqualified yourself. And and so you lost, you know, there are certain opportunities that don't come back that, that, you know, yeah, people say, oh, God, is a God of a second chance. That's not always the case. Judas did not get a second chance. There are certain opportunities that if you don't take advantage of it when it comes around, then, you know, it's just too bad. You know, I mean, I, I say that to your love and it's a hard truth, but you can't just, you know, well, I'll make it up tomorrow. I'll get, get it right next time. You may not. This may be your next time. You may not have another time. OK, that person who needs, you know, you to open that door for them or who needs whatever they may. They, this may be their next time. This may be their second and last time. So there's certain things you can't play with. There are certain opportunities and movements you can't play with. You have to be. That's what the Bible said. Be sober minded. OK, be vigilant. And that means to be watchful and to be alert. And, and so if we're always playing and joking and being carnal minded, you know, the Bible said, what is the end of a carnal minded man? Death. To be spiritual minded is life and peace. So, you know, to be carnal minded, that, that means to to function in your flesh, in your feelings, in your emotions, in your ways. And this is just the way I am. And you got to accept. No, actually, people don't have to accept that. <laughs> Nobody has to deal with that. OK, um, you know, we'll, people will accept it, but they don't have to deal with it. The same way you have a choice to be who you are. People have a choice to be who they are and they can choose not to allow toxic people in their circle. I did a um at, at, in my line of work. I do restorative practice and restorative circles and groups with child with uh, behaviorally challenged children. 
at risk students. And, and so, you know, in, in groups and I'm doing this twice a day and, and I'm teaching these things to my students that you made a choice. Now you have consequences and your family has consequences and the people who were involved in your incident have consequences that if you would have made the right choice, we wouldn't be here. So, yeah, you had the right to choose, but you also have the right to deal with your consequences. And so Mary could have given up. If Mary would have given up, she listen, listen, listen to me very carefully. If Mary would have given up, where would that leave you and I, you and me? Where would that leave us? There are some people, yeah, and we know Jesus is Lord and, and we'll never take away from his deity and from his supremacy and from his authoritative position. I, we'll never deviate from that. In saying that, there are delegated choice, chosen persons, or chosen ones, I might, I my apostle would say, who are tasked with, uh, leading groups of people by example or by direct leadership, but however means God is using you to do that. You know, people, you may be leading people by just them watching you. you. You may be leading people by direct leadership, them literally, you literally leading them. Whatever that means for you, uh, there are people who are, you know, their, their sustenance of their relationship with God is heavily dependent upon what you do. It's dependent upon what you do. So you give up. Guess what? Where does that leave your generation? And they've been fighting all this time. You've got all kinds of things in your family line. And you're the chosen one. You're the priest, the high priest of your family line. Right. Jesus Christ. We know. Uh, y'all, come on. You, you know what I'm saying? But you're, you're the set one. You're the you're the doorkeeper for your bloodline. And and so like Abraham, the Bible says Abraham stood at the door of the tent. We're still talking about season sensitivity. I know I'm wandering, but I'm a prophet, too. So I do that. Because I just I go where God wants me to take the people to get a certain understanding and certain things. So just go go with me. It's all talk. We all talking about the same thing. So you know Ab- the Bible said that Abraham stood at the door of the tent. All right. So th- he was a, he was a door ke- he was a, a, a doorkeeper. He was a gatekeeper. He stood at that door and he entertained the presence of God. And listen, I believe it had not been for for Abraham, I, God probably, you know, listen, God dealt with Sarah, but God believed God would have really, really dealt with Sarah. And I believe, this is just my own opinion, I believe that's why Sarah, <clears throat> Sarah, excuse me, shortchanged her destiny. She didn't get to finish seeing Isaac in in his fullness. She didn't get to witness his marriage or hold her grandchildren. You Do you, yeah, oh, this is so deep, I'm telling you, so deep. So you can shortchange not only your destiny, but those connected to you by not being in place. So when you have a season, <clears throat> excuse me, where you're being challenged and you're being grow, you, you're being, um, you're being developed, go through it. It's not easy. I was telling you in the opening about seasons where I just felt like the, the, the zoo, hell zoo opened up. I mean, and, and the zookeeper just pointed them to my life. If I would have thrown in the towel, I've had people tell me, shut the doors, run, <clears throat> run, give up, do this, do that. And I had to, you, you've got to learn, listen, when you're in seasons like that, you're going to hear a whole lot of voices. Everybody's going to feel like they've got privilege to speak in your life. Do me a favor and do yourself a favor and deny access and let them get mad. Let them get glad. Let them get over it. This is your life. Some of us, well, I'm telling you, just wide open. I don't know who I'm talking to, but some of you are wide open. Your ears are wide open. You've got your ear to everybody's mouth. And then you're wondering why you're not seeing the manifestation of God. I'm still talking about seasons. You wonder why you're still seeing the manifest. And a lot of, and oh, I'm going with God here. A lot of what we see in prophetic ministry is not biblical prophetic ministry. I don't know what this stuff is. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but you won't find it in the scripture. And if I can't find it in scripture, I'm not interested and I'm certainly not impressed. Not impressed. So a lot of what we see that's called prophetic ministry is not biblically validated. And so, you know, just be careful about what you validate and what you connect to and what you're sowing into. Just be careful. Okay, there's some awesome prophetic people. A lot of them are my friends, good friends, and I love them. And they're on point. They're walking in their stuff. And then there's some folk that I know, too, that... A hot mess. They're in error and they're dabbling, dabbling in witchcraft. They don't want to work, so they're fleecing the sheep. And then that's a whole nother topic. Okay? That's a whole nother topic. 
But what I'm saying to you, when you're in those seasons like that, guard your ear, guard your heart. Why? Because the enemy knows that you're on your way to something. You're on your way to that thing. You're on the way for the time of your purpose, for the season of your thing. And he wants to offset that as much as he possibly can. He wants to get you off the trail, off the track, off the road, off the highway. He wants to get you completely out of the way so you can miss that appointed time. Remember, not everybody gets a second chance. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Not everybody gets a second chance. That's a cliche and it works for some people, but not all. If you do have a, if you've privileged to have a second chance, don't play with it. Now, you know, hold on to God, hold on to whatever you got to hold on to. Don't play with it. So the innkeepers had an opportunity to, to experience the manifestation of the birthing of the word of God made flesh in the earth. And they shut the door for whatever reason. And God said, daughter, don't worry about it. If you have to give birth by yourself, give birth by yourself. There have been seasons where I have had to give birth by myself. There are still seasons where I'm giving birth by myself. Not that I don't have help, but there are some things God said, this is not for the nations. This ain't for, you know, this is me and you, daughter. All right. So understand that, you know, God works in seasons and every season is different. And there are going to be seasons of your life that's going to be very intense. There are going to be seasons of your life when you're going to feel like God has abandoned you and dropped you and, and you're on your own. And I'm, I maintain to tell you, your father doesn't operate like that. That's not his DNA. Yes, he will get quiet. No, he said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So don't ever equate silence with absence. It's not the same. So Mary went on and Joseph certainly accompanied her to a place of destiny. But you know what? Same thing with Sarah happened to Joseph. He could not finish his destiny. Watch that, people of God. I've seen this in my life. I've seen this in circles that I've, well, I don't, I don't run circles, y'all. I, I, I've seen this in people that I'm close to and put it to you like that. And um, when God expects you to finish something, God expects you to finish something. And if the way that you are walking toward that finish line is it ain't right, I'm telling you. And I'm not saying this. I tell my people, I'm not saying this to intimidate you. I'm saying this to enlighten you. You know, just watch your walk. You know, this God that's being painted right now is is a counterfeit God. It's a counterfeit gospel. It's a counterfeit Jesus. It's another Jesus. It's a bar Jesus that Simon the Sorcerer and, and all of those talked about. This what we're hearing a lot now is another Jesus. But there's a true representation of who Jesus Christ is and that's the Jesus Christ that we do well to follow and take heed to and emulate not this other stuff that you see out here that has nothing to do with scripture has I told somebody I said that is irrelevant to salvation <laughs> it has nothing to do with your salvation okay so I'm gonna leave you with that thought this was a sobering message but I'm I'm finishing it right here and and I, I intended it to be sobering and, and challenging and even provocative um, because I really want you to think about it. I've spent extensive time over the last few days talking about this. And I really my prayer is that you get it. I want you to go through your seasons and grow through your seasons and, and, and fully step into what God has for you. You deserve that much. For if you're going to go through it, my God, at least grow through it. Get something out the deal. <laughs> you know, that's what I told God. I said, God, if I got to go through it, then I, I need something. You know, I, I need to, I need to, come on. I, I need, you know, let me grow in this area. Let me mature in this area. I need to get, I need, there needs to be some kind of benefit out of this craziness. I, I got to get something out of it. You know, when Israel came out of Egypt, they came out with gold. If you're going to go through something, you're supposed to come out with something, something worthwhile, something of value. Okay. So God bless you. We love you in Jesus name. It's been a blessing and a wonderful time talking about season sensitivity and, and my prayers that you've, you know, had an opportunity to glean and go back and listen to it. If those of you haven't had an opportunity, it's about what three, this is the fourth part, I believe. Um, and talking about season sensitivity, get into the word and, and examine it for yourself. See if what this I'm telling you is true. See it, look at it for yourself. Amen. All right. Well, listen, you all have a blessed afternoon. I bless everything that touches your life. I bless your family, your children, your your sources of income. Bless your health. I bless uh, your material possessions. And um, I bless your walk with God. I bless your study habits. And I bless your prayer life. Amen. And I, I pray that uh, you continue to grow. Go in God and grow in God. Amen. All right. Until next time, grace and peace. God bless you.